Hickok 45 here. And before we start the video, I get the feeling there's somebody, maybe a threat behind me. Yeah. And there was a threat right there too. <laughs> I just put one hole in him and I'm empty. That's all right, it got him, he fell. Yes, Hickok 45, taking care of all threats. Even paper, slinging it all over the place with the HK VP9 SK. All right, so we have another version of the VP9 out now. It is, well, it hasn't been out long, I guess, uh, depending on when you're seeing this, depending on when we post it, who knows. But uh, yeah, this is the subcompact version. I think that's what SK stands for, subcompact version of the VP9. Finally out. I probably made a comment in the first video on the VP9 uh, how it would be more popular in a compact or subcompact version. Okay, nothing wrong with it. It's a great firearm. I've got it out here today too. Uh, it's just that it's a full size. It's kind of like the Glock 17 and lots of other great service pistols uh, that many of us are not necessarily looking for in terms of a carry pistol. Okay, so let's look at this thing. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. I've got another magazine of ammo here. I need to shoot again first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's shoot something. Let's shoot that two liter and that one right there and that bowling pin. <laughs> oh, how about that stop sign? Yeah. It's a good little shooter. It feels good in the hand. And uh, I'll have to say, it's got that hump. You know, I criticize humps on uh, the, of course, the Glocks and everything, but when you get down to a subcompact pistol, the hump hits you, hits me in the right place. It just fills my hand where it needs to go, so the hump is not bad. Uh, on a longer grip, it's hitting down here on my hump, the hump on my hand, so they fight it out. But when it tucks in the, the, the palm like that, it, it feels pretty good. The pistol feels good, it has a nice trigger, it seems to be pretty easy to shoot well, and that's kind of the bottom line, all right? Because I don't think there's many people who, who hate the VP9. There are some things about it, some characteristics that you, know, you might not like. There's the full size, but uh, you know they're, they're, they're good pistols, they're HK, and they don't make any junk, we all know that. And so you have basically the same you know, features on both of these. You know, you, you got these little doodads right here. I forget what they call those, charging control or something, but those help you pull the slide back. And uh, initially, you know, a lot of people think, ah, I'll get those off there, which you can take off, but uh, they're actually kind of cool. You know, it's pretty nice. So uh, I've not taken them off my full size uh, HK there, VP9. And uh, what would you not like about this pistol? I don't know. You might not like the paddle uh, style mag release. You've got that, of course, on both of these. And that takes a little getting used to, but they work just fine. And of course, they're ambidextrous because they're on both sides of the trigger guard under there. You know, so the paddle release might be something you prefer not to have, but they work. They work just fine. A lot of people, I think, start out with those and think they won't like them, and they actually end up preferring them. You know, so you just have to get used to that. So anyway, we got this firearm. Get forget that. H and K. I. I. I've always admired their quality and just the great firearms they make. It's just that some of their models have just been a little too big or busy for me. Uh, but you know, when they got into this VP series, VP9 series, and they make this, I think in a 40 now too and everything, but uh, I just like these better. Uh, the controls, the slide lock, safeties and everything. Well, not a safety, but the slide lock and, uh, and break down levers and everything they're just smaller they minimized all this you know in these newer series of pistols i think even on a p30 and they're just more desirable they, they really are they're fine guns and i understand they make this uh subcompact in the p30 as well the p30 sk or whatever it's a hammer fired version basically of this firearm i think it's the same size but it's a uh, you know it's just hammer fired and these are striker fired okay some of you hate striker fired pistols and you wouldn't like this, but a lot of us have come to really like a striker fired pistol. Just easy to shoot well. Okay, that's what it comes down to. Uh, it's kind of a function over form maybe. You might not like them, think they're ugly, maybe I mean like polymer pistols, but uh, if you're interested in something that functions and that you can shoot well, 
uh, try one, whatever brand. There's a lot of great striker fired pistols out there now, and you'll find probably that you are surprised how well you shoot them, okay, and even how well some of them fit in your hand. So enough on that little aside, extra lesson there, uh, lecture. So the SK model, subcompact, you know, basically the same gun chopped down. So if you want to know anything about the gun, go look at the video on this one. I'm not telling you anything. You don't deserve it tonight. I just want to shoot. No, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's, uh, it is, what is it? Now this one has night sights on it. It comes with regular sights, just luminescent sights. And uh, that one, uh, I think sells retails at least, or MSRP is a little over 700. Now this one, because of the night sights and it comes with an extra magazine, uh, the MSRP is like 820 bucks or something like that. So they're not cheap. You probably buy it. Uh, this one say it's eight, uh, I think it's 819 MSRP. I probably can find it for, I don't know, seven, 750, seven and a quarter, don't know. Uh, they just haven't been out very long. In the other one, obviously, you're not going to probably pay 720 bucks for it. It's probably more like 650 or something, or who knows, maybe even less. All right, so we all know about the MSRP game, don't we? Uh, so that's kind of the price range, but this one does have the night sights on it, and uh, they're just well-made pistols. Again, as, as I'm sure I uh, spoke about in the, in the first video, break it down, you lock it back like that, pull down the lever now you don't have to pull the trigger on these you just release that and you pull on this little lever and it'll just come right on off okay so some people don't want to pull the trigger you got nice healthy uh, rails there uh you know it's uh just well built it's h and k and it captured uh mainspring there you know you got your uh, uh firing pin block there a little bit different than some of them uh rather than just the buttons a little bit different affair there and uh you know, good old H and K. Looks like a lot of the other quality pistols on the inside, doesn't it? Okay, nice, nicely built. Uh, machining looks good. Uh, you know, they do use roll pins. Uh, I'm not a big fan of roll pins, but you know they work. And uh, they get the job done. Okay, let's put that back together and take a couple of shots with it. Uh, see what else about that thing. Got nice uh, uh, serrations there from the front of the slide and the rear of the slide, I have to say. Close her back up, no problem. So that you can just grab it right there and it's no problem to work the slide from, from up there if you want to. And of course back here, you got your little helpers there so it's even easier. Because you notice I slipped off there a little bit, okay? I typically don't use front serrations much. Look, look I just cut myself. I slipped off and I guess just hit the, whatever I hit there, some sharp edge. That's okay. I will bleed for you all. I don't mind. Uh, when you're doing stuff, like I said in a recent video, you just get cut. That's why I have band-aids on occasionally. I'm, uh, I'm constantly uh, doing something, you know, cutting myself on a piece of wire or whatever. Uh, maybe I'll get locked jaw. You'll really be happy, right? So let's take a couple shots. You got your rails there, Picatinny rails. And you know what? This is a magazine from the full size firearm and it works. We'll uh, put that in. I think I've got some, oh yeah, paper towel for perspiration needs, blood needs, wiping up the blood, you know, just from all the sacrifices I made for you all. Now this fits fine. Now I understand they're coming out with, uh, maybe out by the time you see this, uh, some 13 round mags, 15 round, different, different size magazines that will fit here and they have a collar on them, like some of the other brands you've seen, like uh, Springfield Armory, you know, you, you have for the... Uh, uh, XDMs, you got the long mags with the collar to make them fit. You know, so it turns it into a bigger, just a full length pistol, basically. All right, so, yeah, I got that. Let's take a couple of more shots here. All right, cowboy, you need to be addressed. Yeah. Nice trigger. Let's try, let's go on over there and try the red plate. I quit. That's two in a row, I think. <laughs> that felt good. Got another magazine. I'm going to go back to the red plate.
I tell you what, I know right where to hold with that thing. It's a, it's a tack driver. Let's go for the gong. Feels good. It feels good. Uh, the grip on this thing, I made this comment recently on the uh, FN 509, how when you pick it up and just shoot it, you uh, you tend to, the way it fits your hand and the trigger uh, relationship, I guess you'd say, you, you just tend to shoot it well. Okay, you, you tend to shoot it well. And uh, you don't, you don't uh, want to pull it low left as much. It just fills your hand. So you would like that grip probably, okay? Even though uh, some people don't like a subcompact that you just want a place to put that little finger. You notice my little finger is not gonna fit on there no matter what I do, right? It's uh, just not gonna fit and yours probably either. So you just kind of get used to it hanging. I, I don't use my little finger uh, even on larger grips as I've said before. I just do everything with those two fingers and then my trigger finger and I forget about that. And uh, so it doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I prefer it almost. Uh, now let's talk about that because that could be a negative also on this firearm. I, this, this firearm is pretty nice. There's not a lot of, a lot of negative stuff to say about it. Uh, one thing about it though, it is in terms of size, I got a little cheat sheet on weight. Let me give you a little weight here. Let's see what were the weights exactly. I weighed them all. The, uh, let me get the Glock. It's a subcompact. So the Glock, and of course all these are clear with the mags. Let's put the mag in. It's a subcompact, but it's a little bigger than the Glock subcompact. And everybody's familiar with the Glock subcompact, right? Let's line those up there. I was pulling them up here at me. Of that. There you go. So you see, it doesn't have quite as short a grip as the uh, Glock subcompact. All right. And the barrel and slide is a little bit longer. Let me get it. I don't know if it's even up there or not. Yeah. No, it's not. I don't want to cheat. No, that's about even. Okay. So not a lot of difference, but the uh, slide is a little bit longer. So you get a little more weight in this pistol. Okay. So a little bit bigger. And uh, it's it really, uh, my criticism would be, okay, that's all right. Feels good in the hand. It's not gigantic or anything. It's still kind of in the subcompact range. You might argue compact. Uh, it looks as though it ought to hold, like the Glock holds 10 easily in the magazine. Uh, you would expect it to hold 12, you know, maybe even 13, but you expect to hold 12 rounds and it, it holds 10. So you get the same capacity, all right? And for the same capacity, you get some extra weight. The, the SK, let's see, the Glock weighs 21 and a half ounces, according to my scale. And I use my scale and all of them, same thing. So at least we have consistency. And uh, the HK weighs 24 and a quarter ounces. So you've got almost three more ounces in the HK. And you got a bigger size, you know, for the same amount of ammo, okay? So you might consider that a negative. It may not bother you at all. So it just depends on how you look at it. Now let me bring the Glock 19 in. These are two guns everybody knows in terms of size. So you can, you can of course relate to that probably. I'm not gonna do a Glock comparison. I just wanna pull out something here that we all know or are familiar with. Let's line those babies up. Okay. And I guess I need to put, let's see. Let's put the, uh, in this order so I can see a little bit better. Get the backs lined up there. Okay, so just take that for whatever it's worth. There's your length. You got your Glock uh, 26 first, then the HK, SK, the DP9. Then you've got the Glock 19. They all have their magazines in them. They're empty. Uh, and that's kind of how they stack up uh, in terms of size. So, you know, in, in some ways you could argue that this is more of a compact, at least in terms of comparison with the 19. The slides uh, almost as long. Well, no, I don't know. It really, it's just, it's just, it just is what it is. Okay. Now the Glock 19, let's see, I think the, yeah, the Glock 19 actually is lighter as well. I get 23 and three quarter ounces, 24 versus, so you know, about half ounce extra weight uh, on the VP uh, 9 SK weighs about a half ounce more than the Glock 19 and about three ounces more than the baby Glock. Okay, so those are two good comparison guns because we're all familiar with those. So that should tell you where it fits in, in, uh, in the world of, of carry firearms, I guess, in terms of size and weight.
a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger, but uh, it's not gigantic or anything. And I did, I put the calipers on them as well. And obviously you got a little, you got a thicker slide on these things, but when you take everything into consideration, uh, like the Glock 19, uh, now the slide, look at the difference of the, you know, as far as the slide is a lot thicker on the BP9, but when you bring it up here on the frame, it's the same, or actually the Glock frame is even thicker. So in terms of the feel of it in your holster and everything, it's this gun is as thick as the VP9. It slides a lot thinner, but as far as the firearm and frame and everything, there's you know not much difference. Okay. So if that tells you anything about size and weight, uh, more power to you. Okay. So but it's a great feeling gun and I think I'm out of mags that are loaded, right? So we'll load up again here and uh, see what other lies I haven't told you about it. We talked about the price of it and uh, uh, the size and the weight. Uh, feels good. I'll take a look at the trigger is good. I like the trigger. It's got a fairly short reset and uh, nothing to complain about there for sure. It's ambidextrous. You know, you've got your slide release and everything on both sides, your mag release on either side. So you've got an ambi, an ambi pistol that you can't hate. Uh, you'd have to find uh, a reason, I guess, not to like it. If you like H and K, you like uh, the VP9, the full size, I think you'll like this. Unless you just hate the smaller grips, that'd be the biggest problem I think you might have. But it feels pretty good to me. And I've got a big hand, so I, it, it feels great, in fact. So, good shooter, no doubt about it. Uh, it is great to see these companies come out with these, these quality pistols, too. It just really is. Because we never have enough, right? Never have enough. The more good quality handguns that come out, the more choices we have. And... Uh, and it's just fun, fun to shoot them and talk about them, make fun of them, bash them, get people mad at me, compare them with Glocks, people really get mad. <laughs> and of course, one thing about this one too, I didn't, didn't mention, is uh, it's a little thicker in the slide. You don't have the, uh, your uh, barrel rides a little bit higher, okay? The bore axis is a little bit higher, you see. So, so you do have that issue. So when you pick it up and you're looking down there, you can tell it's it just rides a little bit higher. Whether you whereas you tuck, you tuck into a Glock a lot, almost too high. Now I never get slide bite, but man, you are right up there. Okay, so uh, that's one thing that some people might not like as much. But in the nine, at least, I don't really notice this, you know excessive recoil or anything because of that. You know, in a forty, it might be a little bit more noticeable. And a lot of quality pistols are, are like that. You know, uh, SIGs are typically like that, where you just have a little bit higher bore axis. That'd be the one thing. And I had these uh, back straps out here. You get uh, a couple extra back straps with it. I think it comes with the medium. And then the side straps, you know, if you recall and you're familiar with the full size VP9, you can tailor the grip definitely to fit your hand. Because you can, you take the back off and then you can slide these out and, uh, you know, make whatever size grip you want. You basically are making your own grip. I'll have to say, uh, I haven't done it on this one. This feels perfect for me. It just, this is where I would leave it. This was going to be my carry gun. Okay. Which means you might one that is uh, bigger. I don't know, or smaller. So, but that's what those are. Uh, so, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Lots of capabilities there. Uh, so again, uh, you know, there's positives and negatives of it. And then everybody, of course, has to decide for themselves, uh, feel them, pick them up in a gun shop, uh, shoot them. Uh, if you have a rental range around you, I highly recommend that. I think that's almost more important now than it's ever been because there are so many great, you know, pistols out there, uh, you know, that, that have pretty good triggers and uh, are great pistols. You know, we could go down the list of them. You know, these, of course, the SIGs, the, uh, the M&Ps, the Glocks, the, what did we just do recently? Uh, you know, the, the new FN. Uh, there's just so many of them, the Walders. And you can just go right down the line and, and, uh, and name, 
you know, six, eight really, really nice striker fired pistols, if that's what you're looking for, that will get the job done for you and you'll be happy with them. And they'll probably last you well too. All right, I'll shoot a couple more rounds here. I haven't shot enough, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I even loaded the VP9 magazine, didn't I? Okay, because you never know when you need more ammo. Oh, we haven't smoked any pot yet. So let's do, let's go from the holster and smoke some pot. All right, this is just an old uh, Stealth Gear holster. It's actually for a Glock 19, I think. And because it's a little bit flexible, you know, this fits fine. All right, let's shoot that pot. <laughs> uh, he had to die dramatically. There's a couple of water. Yeah. Boom. You just feel like you, uh, you could shoot the thing. Well, you know, cowboy. Cowboy. <laughs> There's always a cowboy looking at me. Plates will always tell you if, uh, oh, I don't know if the firearm is how shootable it is. Because I don't know if you knew this, but plates are frustrating. The swing in plates like that, they're really easy to miss. And you don't know where the bullet's going. Yeah, you know, when you do miss, that's what makes it especially difficult. Yeah, feels pretty good, Mr. Cowboy. <laughs> out of ammo already I should no I dropped one yeah I thought I had another magazine all right let's try something else here let's uh well you know what we probably ought to kill a pig don't you think so now you do notice this little red dot back here that shows you that it's cocked and it is hot and you notice uh, along the extractor there's a little bit of red paint there so that protrudes a little bit when there's a round in the chamber, okay? So you got those features. And there's another feature about the pigs I'll talk about. If I hit one, yeah. When you hit one, you know you've hit it because it will fall. Sometimes. Good, <laughs> Good little shooter. I'm going to try the turkey up there. Oh, <laughs> smart Alec, smart Alec. And let's wrap up on the gong. Can't think of a better place to wrap it up. So the VP9 SK is it, it's another pistol you should look at if you're looking for a striker fired uh, handgun, a, a new striker fired hand. I say new, but you know, if you're looking, if you're new to it, let's put it that way, and you think you want a carry gun, you think you just want a new pistol, you're not anti polymer, you're not anti striker fired, uh, you're not uh, just dead set on a specific brand yet. Uh, I would highly recommend you don't get too dead set on a specific brand and that you uh, just try a lot of them because you're in a different place than I am. I've been shooting at Glocks for so long, it's hard for me to switch gears necessarily for like all of my various firearms needs, you know, in terms of a pistol uh, because I just, uh, the magazines, I've shot them a lot. And so, you know, I mean, I could switch. I could, there's some I really like, but uh but if you're in that position where you're just getting into it, you don't have a lot of firearms yet, and you, you just kind of look for that perfect polymer pistol, striker fired gun, this is one I would try. Okay, and depending on the size you want. Of course, the VP9 full size might be what you prefer because it's easier to get a hold of for you maybe, and harder to conceal maybe if you're uh, a permit holder and all that. So it just depends on what you're doing with it, plans are. Uh, this is one though I'd look at, you know, and just go down that list I alluded to earlier, you know, the M&Ps and the Rugers. There's just so many now. Everybody makes one that is pretty darn good. 
okay and they've been tested extensively the word is out there on the internet in terms of you know what problems they might have how they're how they're working you know amongst you know forums and youtube videos and articles you know, blogs and everything you know there's not many big secrets you know about what's what now so it's just a matter of uh you know, just trying them out if you possibly can because a, a firearm like this is one i could recommend you know uh i could recommend 10 different firearms so you need to feel them and shoot them if you possibly can uh that thing just feels good like i said you get a you get a regular magazine that fits flush and you get one with this uh, finger groove on it with the standard gun and you get luminescent sights uh with uh, this one if you get the uh, you know the night sights you uh, you get an extra magazine it comes with uh three magazines total okay and then they use the the, the full-size mags that i think they use they do a p30 mags work in them and so that's kind of the 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 short and dirty on on them nice firearm i could uh i could load it up and just shoot all night but i know you're late for dinner uh it, it's one of those that just feels good to pull the trigger on it you know it fits your hand well I like the trigger. John likes the, the trigger and the, the way it feels. So it's not just me. Check your reset here. Uh, and show you the reset. It's, it's a pretty good reset. It's not maybe a tad longer than some, but not long. It's not long at all. And it, uh, it feels good. Now, one thing I didn't do before I let you go, let's do a little machine gunning with it. How about that? Sorry, John. You know, I never get enough shooting. Let's just empty one of these magazines. This is one of the things I like to do. Oh, I know what I didn't do. I didn't shot any of this, this pretty ammo, the Syntec. This lipstick ammo, somebody call it. This is, uh, <laughs> all right, let's fire a few of these just since I have them out here. And, oh, you know, ah. Okay, I'll do that. And let me get another magazine out. And while John's showing you, I'm going to walk around behind him and get this other box. Another thing we forgot to do is try out some hollow points. So we'll shoot two more mags real quick. If I didn't lay my knife down somewhere, and there it is. Okay. Demonst I get another chance to demonstrate again, too, how I have finally learned how to open these boxes. There we go. Yeah, we got some federal uh, HST here. You squeeze the ends. And if you have the paper cut, Oh, there you didn't get to see me get mad and throw it. All right. Okay. So we've got some Syntec in there. And we'll put uh, some of these hollow points in here. Just to complete the test. So you can, <laughs> if you ever thought that our videos were scripted, uh, I don't know what you're thinking about. Uh, we sort of start the camera rolling and do our thing. There we go. John never knows where I'm going half the time. All right, let's start with the Syntec and we'll wrap up with the uh, the hollow points. So it's good and dirty, it ought to be a good test for it. All right, so, well, let's just dump these into the burn barrel. Yeah, that, uh, that trigger and reset feels good. We've got hollow points, so let's just waste them on something like, I don't know, that pie pan or whatever it is. Yeah. And they all cycled. Imagine that. Yeah. We all know H and K makes great guns, so it's just a matter of not whether they, they fit you or you like the particular features. Again, the paddle, mag release, you got some different things there about them. But uh they have a feel of quality. They they really do. I've handled a lot of pistols and like I was saying about the FN, the five oh nine, whether you like it or not, or you, you like the VP nines or not the h and k's when you pick these guns up you just you just uh, have a feel you've got a quality firearm in your hand no doubt about it so anyway I, I, that's all the positives and negatives i can come up with and uh, it's a good little shooter uh, one you ought to look at so appreciate y'all coming by appreciate all the people that help us but it's gun shop the nra uh, federal uh, premium and uh, hope you support the people that support us and uh, the most important people who help us are you all by coming by and and just uh, participating as best you can life is good
hope you guys enjoyed that because I know I sure did. While well, I've got you here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just want to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter, it's Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.